Hello, everybody. My name is Chad Boschert, and I'm the Director of Business Intelligence at Gravitate Solutions. This video is intended to be a quick, no barriers introduction to Power BI with your NetForum data. By following the steps in this video, you'll be able to kick the tires on Power BI using your association's data without getting stuck on technical issues such as connecting to the database or writing SQL queries. Let's get started. What you're seeing right now is the first screen in Power BI. Now, before you can get here, you'll need to download and install Power BI. To do that, go to Google and search for Power BI download and choose the downloads Microsoft Power BI link. From here, click download and it'll be downloaded to your computer. Simply install that and you'll be presented with with this screen here. Now Power BI will most likely ask you to sign in. I'm already signed in. Um, you'll want to use your Microsoft account if you have one. If not, go ahead and create an account and sign in with that. To begin using Power BI, you'll need to get data. Now, for us, we'll use a query that already exists. So what I'll do is go to the CRM module individuals and query individual and use an existing query that we've already got. For me that's Power BI demographics. At this point we'll run the query and in the spirit of keeping the barriers low we will export this to CSV rather than connecting directly to the database. If you're a SQL person the steps to the steps to connecting to uh, to your database via SQL um, are pretty easy and straightforward, and I'll cover those at the end. So we've got is we've got our individuals query in my downloads folder, and we'll come back to Power BI. So inside of Power BI, we'll start by clicking Get Data, and Power BI supports many, many, many data sources. For us, we'll be using a file. And CSV and we'll say connect. It's going to prompt us for the path to that file. I'll choose the file we just downloaded and it'll give us a preview of the data. And what I'm going to choose, I could choose load and we can start building our dashboard now, but instead I'm going to click edit to show the query editor. Now inside of the query editor, this is how we transform the data that we're pulling from our data sources. Uh, you'll see a list of queries along the left side that are in our workbook. You'll see a preview of the data here in the center and then the steps that have been applied to those data sources. So for this particular query, I'm going to change the name to individual demographics. Now these steps get apply, applied in sequence and I'll, I'll show that here in just a little bit. But for now I'm going to, now that we've named our query, choose close and apply. Now for the analysis that we'll do with this data, um, we're mostly dealing with the number of individuals. So in order to actually uh, show the number of individuals on the screen, we will right click our query on the along the right side here in the fields bar and choose new measure. That's going to show the measure formula bar up here. And what we'll do is we'll give our measure a name, number of individuals. and a formula. So since we're looking for the count of people, we're going to get this IntelliSense and there's many different types of counts and what we're after is a distinct count. So I'll double click that and then it's going to prompt us with the number of fields with all the fields in our queries and I will choose primary key. So that's going to be the individual CST key from the NetForum database to complete that. Now to actually see the number of individuals that are in our data source, we simply click it and drag it into this design canvas. By default, it's going to show up as a bar chart, but what we have is a library of visualizations. The visualization that I'm going to choose for this one is the card view, and that's going to show the actual number of individuals. So any of these, any of these visual, visuals, we can resize by grabbing the drag handles and we can move them around by clicking the bar across the top and moving them. 
So what we see now is there's 4,393 individuals in this data set. I can also filter those individuals by dragging the member flag onto the canvas and choosing the slicer visualization. So I'll resize that and move it up here. So now we can begin to filter the number of individuals by not a member or a member. And those are linked. Now, zero and one is not the most intuitive uh, for yes and no, so we can correct that by coming over to our query, right clicking the query, and choosing Edit Query. Now, remember, I mentioned these steps that get applied in sequence. So, uh, out of the box, when we connected to our SQL to our to our CSV file, Power BI connected to the source CSV. And you can see here that it's actually showing those row headers as a data. So it promotes those headers for us. And then it does its best to intuit the data types for those fields. Since in that forum, member flag is zero or one, we're going to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually say, this is a text field. And then I'm going to right click the column and choose replace values and say member flag. Anytime you see a zero, replace that with no, not a member. And I'm going to do replace values again. So when you see a one, guess a member. And say OK here. And what you can see is it's adding more and more steps in sequence here to this. So we're progressively transforming this data set. Now I'll choose close and apply. So now the member flags are no's and yeses, or everyone. OK. Let's do something interesting now. So we'll pull our number of individuals out again. And what I want to do is look at those by, let's say, country. So I will choose to drag. I'm just clicking country and dragging it into the axes. And we can resize this to make it larger. And this data set, this is just a test data set that we use here at Gravitate. Um, so the data is a little bit abused, but we can still, the intent here is to, to show Power BI. So we're able to look at these and see that most of our folks are in the United States. So what we'll do is we will pull in state and territory. And now across the top here, there's a couple of icons. So we can actually drill into the next level of the hierarchy and see those people, those number of individuals by state. And it tails off here on the side. And we can scroll to the edge if we need to. Now, a bar chart is not the best way to visualize this, so we'll try a different visual. And we can experiment. I encourage you to experiment with visuals. So perhaps we want to try and use a tree map. This is going to show the relative proportion for each state. Um, or this map visual. So now we can actually zoom in on the map and see the relative weights based on the uh, the shading, the lightness or darkness of each one of those individual states. So that's a pretty good start. Alrighty. And then these are all still linked, so we can say just show me my members or my non-members or everyone. Okay. Let's keep, oh, and by the way, um, we can also continue to drill up in this. So now we're looking at people by country. And you'll see now the shading happens at the country level. And I did that simply by clicking the drill up. We can do the drill back down again. So those are good buttons to be aware of. I'm going to resize this a little bit, and we'll pull some additional visuals in here. So we've got activity scoring. 
engagement scoring data in here. So by default, it's going to pull those scores in because score is a numeric value, it's going to pull that in as the measure. And in this case, it doesn't really make sense to, to sum those scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that score, and drag it up to the axes, and instead pull number of individuals down as our value. And what you'll see is a distribution of individuals, number of individuals, by the normalized engagement score. I'm going to try a different a different bar chart. So instead of being that orientation, we're going to switch to this orientation. So same data, just visualized slightly differently. Now, there's a lot of noise in this because we're seeing the individuals, the fives, the sixes, and the sevens. So it might be nice to, to group those into some level of hierarchy. So we're going to go back to our query. And we're going to edit the query. We're going to create bins. Now, there's many strategy for for bucketizing these many strategies for bucketizing these values, but we're just going to take a very simple one. And we're going to come up in the ribbon here to add column, and we are going to add a custom column, and we're going to call it. We want to be consistent with our naming. Normalized score, we'll call them bins. So when you're, this is probably the most coding you'll ever need to do inside of Power BI. They've got great documentation so you can learn about more about these formulas by clicking that link. And it will take you out here to uh, to some really helpful documentation as far as creating your own custom formulas. What we're looking for is the formula categories link. So we'll click that. And along the left side here are all the different formulas. So for us, we're looking for the number functions. In this case, we'll find a round down. So if I use number dot round down, then here's some example usages of it, of that function. So coming back to our query editor, we will do number dot round down. I will double click my normalized score. And we are going to divide that by 10. So what that'll do is put everything 0 to 10 in a bucket, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, into their own little buckets. And we'll say OK to this. We can view what all those look like. And if we want to, we can also reorder these columns just to see. Oh, here it is, normalized score. To see, so 0 to 9 is going into the 0 bucket. 10 to 16 is in the 1. 10 to 20 is in the one bucket. So coming back, we will say close and apply. And now I'm just going to resize this so we can see. Here's our score bins. We'll drag it into the axes, and you can see this little yellow line here. And if we go up or down, it's going to be higher or lower in the hierarchy than the normalized skill, the normalized score. So now we're seeing something that's a little bit more useful, except that the ordering is a bit off, 0 to 1, 1 to 10. So what I want to show is that data types are important. So we can come back to our query, and that's really a really quick, easy fix. So we go back and find our new field. And instead of it being, you can see it's showing that it's basically text, we're going to come up and change the data type to whole numbers. Close and apply and our sorting should be fixed now. Perfect. Zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours. And then we can either right click and drill into one of these, or we can come back up and drill into all of them if we want.
Okay. So hopefully with this, you should be able to get started creating your own dashboards with your own queries. If you're a SQL person, the last piece I want to show is when we went to get data, we have the option for SQL Server. So if you have your own queries from SSRS reports or um, from something else and that you'd like to use, it's a matter of choosing the SQL Server data source rather than the text file source. You put in your server name, database name, and then you can paste your query right here into the query options. Now, if you're a hosted Abila, if you're hosted at Abila, you'll want to use this command here, replacing my account name, my AV host account name with your own AV host account name. And what that will do is it will connect, it will start Power BI Desktop using your, your credentials. So you can still use a Windows authentication on, on the SQL Server database hosted there. At Abila. Um, the alternative is to go ahead and use a SQL Server login as well. So hopefully this has been helpful in getting you started. I encourage you to be curious and play and um, have fun. All right, bye for now.